Let's do the following experiment, and this cheap black film is a water container which is covered with a transparent film. Obviously, the sun will heat this water, and for example, now solar energy increased the water temperature higher than 680 degrees Celsius. We understand that it will be a solar heater if we add inlet and outlet for water circulation, and these solar heaters are relatives of these heaters which were described by the first video of this YouTube channel. And I recommend using them for similar long rows on a horizontal roof or on the ground. This solar heater is very cheap. And this table describes the materials for a large solar heater with an area of almost 9 square meters, however the lifespan of these parts will be only 1 or 2 years, and therefore maintenance of the heater requires their periodic replacements. We can calculate that the cost of these materials is about $4 per square meter of the solar heater, and it is 10 or 20 times cheaper than these traditional unglazed solar heaters or almost 100 times cheaper than these traditional solar collectors. This table describes the annual heat production from one square meter of our solar heater and the cost of our heat for different temperatures in the United States, Europe, and India, and I calculated the cost of the heat on the basis of this cost of capital and labor. These are the cases when the cost of our solar heat is approximately equal to the cost of heat from natural gas and we see that they correspond to the water temperatures of 45 or 65 degrees Celsius. However a decrease in the water temperature significantly increases the annual production of our heat, and therefore its cost decreases, and these are the cases when our solar heat is about 8 times cheaper than heat from natural gas. But we must understand that main share of this heat is produced in summer, and these cases do not have the heat production in winter. However the maximum of the production in India is spring and autumn. This is an example of calculating the cost of our heat, but it is obvious that it will be true if our spending money and time reaches these targets. So, our solar heater can produce a lot of very cheap heat with a temperature of 30 or 40 degrees Celsius, and this heat may be interesting for heating pool water or for industrial processes of some types of plants and factories. In addition, our cheap heat can be used for the initial stage of hot water supply, or our heat may go to a heat pump input. However we will often come to the decision that our new solar heaters are best replaced with their black relative, because it is simpler and cheaper, and it has no risk of algae in its water. But unfortunately, this black relative is not able to form a combination with similar mirrors because their extrasolar radiation can melt its black film. This drawback is missing in the case of our new solar heater, and therefore I have the opportunity to install it, for example, under this additional solar radiation from very cheap mirrors. A similar solar heater can be constructed as follows. And first I put these beams, and then I will put these sections. I remind you that the first video of my YouTube channel showed these actions in more detail including how I make these sections and glue the wooden battens to the sheets of expanded polystyrene. However the sections must have these wooden battens, and we see that I used polyurethane foam to fix the battens to the expanded polystyrene. And these staples fix the edges of the black film to the battens. One edge of the transparent film is fixed to this wooden batten with these staples. Now I am showing how the second edge of the transparent film is fixed with these staples. Here we see pieces of wooden boards of different thicknesses, and I used them to level off the solar heater, and perhaps the leveling will be made easier when the heater has so little water. Let's do the next experiment, and now I added these wires to raise the transparent film above the water. It may seem to us that the layer of air between the water and the transparent film will increase the efficiency of our solar heater. But unfortunately we see that the lower surface of the transparent film is covered with water condensate which reduces the efficiency although now the water temperature is only 39 degrees Celsius. But now the sun has heated the water to a temperature of 680 degrees Celsius. And we see that the condensate combined into large drops. 
Let's compare this second option of our solar heater and this first option where the film lies on the water, and we see that now the maximum temperature of the water heating is slightly higher than it was in the case of the second option. Interestingly, here we see clusters of small bubbles of air which left the water due to high temperature, and it is obvious that the bubbles slightly decrease the efficiency of the first option. But let's compare the first and second options more correctly, and I will use these two identical black trays which are filled with water of the same height. So, now it is 10 o'clock in the morning, and the water temperature of both trays is about the same, and they are covered with identical transparent film, but here the film does not touch the water, and this is the second option of our solar heater. And this is the first option where the film lies on the water. 15 minutes have passed, and we see that the temperature difference of 1 degree Celsius persists, and this fact tells us that the efficiency of both options is the same. However, later the film of our second option is coated with the water condensate, and the temperature difference begins to increase. This fact tells us that the efficiency of the first option is better. In addition, we see that the maximum heating temperature of the first option is higher. These are the results of my measurements of the energy parameters of both options, but this coefficient depends on the wind. And the higher the wind speed, the higher the coefficient. But we see that a real solar heater is intermediate between the first and second options, and the smaller these areas and these areas, the closer to the first option. In addition, the energy parameters of a real solar heater will be slightly worse due to dirt on the film surface and other reasons. That's why I use these degraded energy parameters for these calculations. If our solar heater is farther north than 35 or 40 degrees north latitude, it will not work in winter due to the following three causes. Firstly, its water can freeze at night, although this video will still show how to solve this problem. The second cause is snow. Third, the winter sun is too low. And our heater will work well if the height of the sun above the horizon is more than 30 degrees. Here we see the water inlet of our solar heater. Unfortunately, we see that the inlet can be a source of air bubbles, and it is obvious that we must reduce this negative effect. This is the installation of the first version of water outlet of our solar heater. Now water is circulating through our solar heater because we see the water leaving through this outlet. And it comes to the heater through this inlet, but we must pay attention to this water level. Obviously, stopping the water supply through the inlet will reduce the height of the water level. And we can change the height of the water by changing the thickness of these plates near the inlet. Now I show how we should place the inlet if we want the water to completely leave our solar heater, and this outlet position corresponds to this situation of the water circulation through the heater. But now I have stopped the water supply through the inlet, and we will observe a gradual decrease in the water level, and this is the situation 4 minutes after the water supply stop. Now the water has completely left our solar heater, and this possibility is important for cases of frost at night. Appearance of the sun will turn on the pump which will again begin the water circulation through our solar heater, but we must understand that an empty heater can have problems during strong winds because now its transparent film does not stick to the water surface. This is the second version of water outlet for our solar heater. And now I show the different stages of its installation and its operation at different heights of water in the solar heater, but we can change the water height by changing the thickness of these plates near the outlet. This version of the outlet is interesting because its installation is simpler than the first or third version. Now I show the situation a few minutes after stopping the water supply through the inlet of the solar heater. This is the third version of the water outlet. Now we see how the water comes out through the outlet. In addition, we understand that our solar heater has the same features as this black relative. 
and I described these features of the connection to a pump and heat storage in the second video of this YouTube channel. This is the situation after heavy rain with about 10 mm of rainfall, and the next few days will be sunny, with air temperatures up to 30 degrees Celsius. Let's see how quickly the sun evaporates this rain water, and this is the situation the next day. Obviously, this rainwater significantly reduces the efficiency of our solar heater because its evaporation takes a lot of useful energy. That is why I recommend removing the rainwater after heavy rain, but I also recommend that you do not remove the water after light rain up to a few millimeters of rainfall, because the sun will evaporate so little rainwater in less than one day. In addition, we see that the evaporation of rainwater leads to a large amount of dirt on the surface of our solar heater, and this is another reason for removing rainwater, and now I am showing how I do it, and we see that this is a simple and quick action. Let's do another experiment, and now we see that the transparent film is clean, without air bubbles and dirt, but this is the situation in the following days, and we observe the formation and increase of air bubbles during 11 days without rain. In addition, the surface of the transparent film gradually accumulates dirt. Now I will show you one of interesting methods of removing the bubbles, and we see that a strong westerly or easterly wind can raise the transparent film, and then the film again falls to the surface of the water, but without a lot of air bubbles, however I have doubts that this method will have wide practical application. But let's get back to this situation of accumulating dirt and bubbles during 11 days, and after that it rained. Then I removed the rainwater and we see that the transparent film falls to the water surface without large air bubbles. This is the situation the next day, and we can conclude that my rainwater removal method is not able to remove absolutely all dirt from the surface of the transparent film. This is dirt before my next experiment, and then it rained. Now I will also remove rainwater, but in the beginning I quickly use this brush. I want to test the hypothesis that now the removing rainwater will better remove that dirt. You can measure that the brushing takes about 20 seconds of my time per square meter of our heaters. That's why I do not recommend using the brush more often than one or two times a year. In other words, this action should take less than 40% of the total maintenance time of our solar heaters. After that, we see that the brush does not remove all dirt from the surface of the transparent film. However now we can compare the situation before the brushing and after that, and we can notice that the brush reduced the amount of dirt several times, and I remind you that we must install a new transparent film every one or two years. Let's look at another one of my experiments when the transparent film was clean. But then there was this rain and I removed this rainwater without that brush, and now I'm showing dirt on the surface of the film. We see a little dirt on the transparent film, and it's obvious that this dirt didn't come from the atmosphere because the film was clean before the experiment. This is the dirt that was here before the rain. But rain drops through it to the surface of the transparent film. To test this hypothesis, I put a lot of grass here, and then I waited for this rain. And now I will remove this rainwater without the brush. After that, we see that the dirt is much less because the extra grass covers the ground against raindrops. Now I will show you one more of my experiments when I use these two identical black trays which are covered with an identical transparent film, and I filled them with water two weeks ago. This tray was filled with ordinary water from a 15 meter underground well but this tray contains rainwater. So, both trays were filled with water about two weeks ago, and the water was heated by the sun every day to 40 or 50 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look at both trays after two weeks of their operation, and we see that the tray with ordinary water has a large amount of solid flakes which lie at the bottom and float on the surface of the water. These flakes left the underground water due to a dozen cycles of its heating 
and it is obvious that such flakes will reduce the efficiency of our solar heaters. At the same time, the rainwater tray has no the flakes. Now I have removed the water from both trays, and we see not only those flakes, but also white coating on the bottom and sides of the tray of the ordinary water, and we understand that this white coating will further reduce the efficiency of our solar heaters. Now I show the trays after removing those flakes, and we can better see the white coating on the black film of the tray of the ordinary water after two weeks of its operation. At the same time, the rainwater tray has no the white coating. In addition, this transparent film above the ordinary water tray also has some white coating which reduces the efficiency of solar heaters additionally. So, ordinary water is not suitable for our type of solar heaters, and we have to fill them with rainwater or some other clean water. Let's also look at the condition of the films of my solar heater after three months of its operation with rainwater, and we can see some trash which has accumulated on the black bottom of the heater for more than three months. Now I have removed the water from the heater, and I washed this zone a few minutes ago, and therefore we can conclude that there is a slight layer of dirt on the black film. The transparent film did not accumulate any white coating during three months of its operation with rainwater, and we can make sure of this fact if we compare this zone and this. I did not see any algae in the water of my solar heater during the three months of its technical testing, but perhaps this is due to the fact that the sun often heated the water to a temperature higher than 50 or 680 degrees Celsius. However if algae is a problem, we can use this solar heater which has no algae problem.